The Lord be with you. <laughs> I, you know, we, uh, I said last week it was the wasteland and the oasis, and uh, uh, the wasteland uh, was pretty was pretty rough. I know uh, it was um, uh, the um, Lord is angry with all the nations. His wrath is upon their armies. He will totally destroy them and give them over to slaughter. Uh, the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of retribution to uphold Zion's cause. And there were references in chapter 34 to turning the streams into burning pitch and the dust into burning sulfur. Uh, and a pretty vivid picture of what uh, hell is given to sound like. And uh, that uh, the land would be a, a wasteland. Uh, it would be the... Uh, overrun with uh, thorns and nettles and brambles, a uh, haunt for jackals and hyenas. Uh, and, uh, you know, those are pretty, actually, jackals are pretty nasty animals. <laughs> uh, and so this is where we left off. And then I, uh, I used the opportunity to, uh, at the end of that, to uh, play a little George Frederick Handel for, for everyone. And we listened to... Uh, uh, the, the glory of the Lord from Handel's uh, Oratorio of the Messiah. Um, the um, the idea there is that uh, we're moving into uh, a sec, the last chapter before we have this little historical narrative part uh, that describes uh, what happened in Jerusalem uh, when the uh, Assyrian army besieged the city. And then we get into the part of Isaiah that Dale calls Isaiah's greatest hits. Uh, when you start moving into chapter 40 and beyond uh, and you get into some of the songs of the suffering servant and, and, and these sort of things. And really, uh, chapter 35 uh, is uh, of that same uh, sort of uh, theme. And uh, you, we'll, uh, I'd like to, if we can get to somebody to read the, the first four verses. Uh, can you uh, got your script? Yeah. Okay. This is entitled the joy of the redeemed. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the furthest in the burst in the bloom, it will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The of Lebanon will be given to it the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with faithfulness to divine retribution. He will come to save you. Thank you. Um, we see there that uh, that day of vengeance and retribution that were mentioned in the previous chapter have a purpose. Uh, it's the part of God's uh, synthesis here to bring about uh, this transformation, which is, I mean, this is a um, a radical reversal of what uh, we were looking at in chapter 34. Um, and um, the, uh, you know, you even see uh, uh, something that Isaiah is sort of known for, the uh, his uh, personification of nature, uh, how the desert itself is going to rejoice and the land will uh, will shout for joy. Um, and, and all this is because, because the glory of the Lord is revealed and we will see the splendor of our God. Um, and uh, there's no real doubt. Uh, the reason uh, George Frederick Handel said that the, uh, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together was uh, uh, how, how was that accomplished? What, what, what's the name of his composition? The Messiah, yeah, the Messiah will accomplish all this. He will be the glory of the Lord. He will reveal uh, the splendor and the majesty of our God. Um, and uh, it, uh, the idea here is that, uh, that Christ will be the fulfillment of this. And so in, in a sense, he's speaking to uh, his local audience uh, at this point here, saying, uh, you know, the, the desert and the parched land will be glad. 
the wilderness will rejoice. It will burst into bloom. Strengthen your feeble uh, hands and your and, and your weak knees, uh, and and and, and uh, be encouraged in your fearful hearts, uh, th uh, because God is coming uh, to deliver you. Um, and um, the uh, the um, mention in verse one of the crocus might. You know, I, I, I could I could take that or leave it, but uh, I, I I decided I don't. <laughs> uh, you know, the crocus uh, is the same plant in the other biblical translations is sometimes referred to as a rose. Uh, the the legendary rose of Sharon uh, was actually not a species of rose at all, but it was a red tulip like bulb. Uh, that that uh, that bloomed uh, in the spring in the uh, uh, the plain of Sharon and the uh, Jezreel Valley, and uh, let me quote uh, uh, a lady named Winifred Walker who wrote a, a great old book that I have had for years, uh, the, all the plants of the Bible, uh, and uh, but anyway she says after the spring rains. The view from the plain of Sharon is of surpassing richness and beauty as the lowering hills of the land of Judah to the east look toward the shining waters of the Mediterranean to the west. I thought that painted a beautiful picture. Uh, Isaiah was a resident of those lowering hills of Judah. And uh, it's a spectacle like this that uh, he is kind of setting forth here because he refers uh, to uh, to Sharon and uh, to Carmel, which are in that region of the Jezreel Valley uh, and, and that plain, uh, that coastal plain uh, right there near uh, uh, Mount Carmel that uh, uh, runs right down to the, uh, the cliffs at the Mediterranean. And uh, so there's this, this idea of this, uh, of this beautiful vista uh, and this renewal of nature, uh, you know, it was brambles and nettles and thorns. Uh, it was a place of jackals and hyenas, but now uh, it's all uh, renewed and, and remade. Um, it, uh, it certainly is, uh, uh, this ought to make us think of, uh, of what the Apostle Paul speaks of in Romans chapter 8. For all the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait for our adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. We see the redemption of the land here. Uh, the idea of all creation groaning just think about what we've been through uh, in the last month or so. Do you, do you think we, we would have storms like this in Eden? Do you think we would have storms like this in the New Jerusalem? We wouldn't have these kind of things. It's just all as if all nature just wants to shrug off the burden of the curse of the ground. Uh, and the, uh, the the weight of, of sin, which is not nature's fault. It wasn't the fault of creation. Who brought the curse upon the ground? We did. It's the sin, uh, the redemption of our body. So we have to be remade. And that's why uh, uh, it says, you know, they're waiting for the revealing of the sons of God uh, and our adoption uh, into the family of God and uh, the redemption of our bodies in Christ. And it's that message uh, that, that's supposed to strengthen the feeble hands and the weak knees and the fearful hearts and give them strength and courage to endure. Uh, you know, we, um, this is Philip and I had a moment to talk yesterday after uh, West Standard Service and uh, talking about the the in, endurance of uh, of the saints. Uh, we're thinking about our friends in Cuba. Uh, you think about our uh, the people that David Witt uh, uh, shared uh, about with us, and uh, uh, how how they endure all kinds of hardship. Uh, they fix in their eyes 
all of those things that are not uh, seen, uh, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is, is forever. I have the city without with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Uh, that, that, that is what they, uh, the, what, what, what they cling to and what we are uh, to, to cling to as well. Uh, and uh, we could be in this world, but not of it. Verses uh, five through seven. Uh, uh, who's, who can get that? Julianne, you read that for us, please. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the blind be opened. Then will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where the jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> After having read the New Testament, do some of these things sound familiar? The eyes of the blind being opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame leaping like a deer. Think of some of those. Uh, we said how it's Messiah who's going to bring the other things to pass. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, what blind eyes being opened would come to, come to mind? Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. Don't you love that? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David. And they all say, hush, 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 leave him alone. And Bartimaeus keeps on shouting. And he just says, bring him here. <laughs> uh, also think about the, uh, uh, the man born blind. In John chapter 9, where Jesus spits on the ground and <laughs> anoints his eyes, says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Uh, and uh, then... Uh, because it happened on the Sabbath, he got hauled into the synagogue, and he said, well, that man must be a sinner. And he said, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know, but I know that nobody in the world could heal a man born blind except God. <laughs> and so you, you, we, we see the fulfillment of that, uh, the mute tongue shouting for joy. Uh, you know, it was when the uh, Pharisees accused Jesus of casting out demons by uh by the uh, by, Beelzebub, uh, that uh, he had just healed a man uh, who had a mute uh, spirit uh, cast out a demon out of him, and um, this is when he speaks of the uh, unforgivable sin, you know, a blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. You've seen the witness of the Holy Spirit here. I cast out uh, demons by the finger of God, and uh, then the uh, kingdom of God is among you, you know, as as he would say, and. Uh, it talks about the lame leaking by the deer. What what beautiful biblical image comes to mind there? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember his name either, his name either, but Peter and John did that one, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, it's a book of Acts, and uh, you know, <laughs> it talks about him just leaping and praising God. You know, this guy, that, and everybody in the temple is like, that's the, that's the lame guy, you know. And uh, of course, they ended up getting arrested for that. Uh, but uh, we just see how the messianic era is. It made me think of um, when, when poor John the Baptist uh, was in prison. And uh, you can't, uh, in Herod's dungeon, and about any time, he, he was probably destined to lose his head. Uh, and, you know, his faith, uh, he wasn't so sure now about, uh, about that cousin of his, about, the, about if Jesus was the one, and he sends his disciples to Jesus to ask, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Remember how Jesus answered him. And it's almost like he's quoting Right here from Isaiah 35 says, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And um, so we, we see that the, uh, these, these miracles, 
uh, identify Jesus as the one. Yes, he is the one who is to come. And uh, they are the uh, uh, they are the testimony because Jesus even tells his own disciples that they're the testimony of, of his identity as the Christ and as the son of God. He says, believe me that I am in the father and the father is in me or else believe on account of the works themselves. Believe on account of the works themselves. He says this in the upper room uh, uh, in, his, in his final discourse with the disciples in John 14. And so we see a, a, a redemption of, of nature. The crocus is blooming uh, and the glory of the Lord. We see uh, a, a reversal of the curse against, uh, against uh, and its effects against the human race. Uh, blindness, uh, deafness, uh, lameness, all these things are these congenital uh, uh, problems are, are cast out. And, uh, you know, we sing that, uh, that hymn every year. Uh, no, no more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing flow as far as the curse, the curse is found. It's the reversal of that curse that took place in the garden, and uh, uh, we uh, this is this is uh, what we're uh, uh, seeing here in Isaiah thirty-five, and uh, again the restoration of nature uh, is mentioned. Um, uh, I saw Julianne read there for waters break forth in the wilderness, streams in the desert, and the burning sand shall become a pool. Thirsty ground, springs of water, no longer a place for thorns and thistles and hyenas, and the uh, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. You know, if you're uh, accustomed to a, um, you know, that dry and dusty and in some areas a very rocky land, although there are some really fertile areas in Israel, and I think this might have been the appeal of of, of Egypt you know, of Goshen was the grass and reeds and papyrus, you know, and uh, it, it was a, a, a kind of an emblem of how lush and luxuriant uh, and, and, and how much uh, water, uh, abundance of water uh, was there uh, and uh, was a uh, something that uh, was a desirable point. Um, and uh, this isn't the first time uh, this has come up as we've been going through Isaiah. Uh, really, just a few chapters ago, uh, back in Isaiah 32, at verse 15, it talked about uh, there, there was a, uh, a um, he was speaking of this messianic era, and it talked about when the spirit is poured upon us from on high and the wilderness will become a fruitful field and the fruitful field will become a forest. And then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace. And so I yeah, do that to sort of show the consistency of what we've been doing. We get it in bits and pieces, but it, it uh, the un same undercurrents of, uh, of, 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 uh, prophetic revelation run consistently throughout uh, uh, Isaiah here. Um, Jay, you feel like reading? Uh, verses 8 through 10, please. My way shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come on up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. When they come to Zion with singing, everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Thank you so much. Um, let's make another uh, connection. Uh, from earlier in, in Isaiah. All right, what James just read in verse 8, a highway shall be there. It shall be called the way of holiness. Now, the unclean shall not pass over it. And 
Uh, you know, our my translation read a little different. It says, "I shall it shall belong to those who walk on the way." Um, and this idea of the way keeps coming up, and uh, this is, this is significant uh, New Testament wise. But let's let's consider the idea of the highway uh, back in Isaiah nineteen. Uh, 23 through 25. We studied this a while back. Uh, Isaiah 19, verse 23. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will go to Egypt and the Egyptians to Assyria. The Egyptians and the Assyria, Assyrians will worship the Lord together. In that day, Israel will be the third, along with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing upon the earth. The Lord Almighty will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, my inheritance. Well, this is certainly a, 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 an eclectic picture of, uh, of, uh, this, of this highway when we're including Assyria, who right now stands as the enemy of the Israelites, and Egypt, who they've been, uh, who've been, they've been cautioned against uh, from uh, from seeking uh, their uh, assistance in in battle, and so uh, we remarked at the time we studied that, that the word that's used to here that shows up here in both these uh, passages is highway mesela uh, was really not that commonly used. Uh, in in the Bible, uh, the more common word uh, for a thoroughfare was a street, uh, rakob, which was the uh, seemed to describe the narrow roadways and alleys in a city. And when Jesus talks about the salt being thrown out in the uh, in, in the uh, in the roadway, that's that's what he's speaking of. Uh, and this was more for often like for foot traffic and beasts of burden, but the highway was for caravans and for chariots you know big a, a big wide thoroughfare uh i could put it in 21st century terms it's as if in that day uh, god will provide an interstate highway uh <laughs> to gather all of these people to him you notice in that passage i read from isaiah 19 that there were gentiles uh among that uh, among that group and I think this idea of the high, of the highway of holiness or the way of holiness uh, is is dealing with that. Um, the idea of of it being for those who are not uh, the unclean shall not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Uh, I have wicked fools will not go about on it. I don't know if there's other translations uh, there, but I think you know the idea of a fool uh, is an unbeliever. Uh, in, in the Bible, uh, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Uh, and the idea, I think these are the ones who were formerly were, uh, would have been considered unbelievers, perhaps, uh, because uh, they were, uh, were, were Gentiles. And, uh, uh, and, and so they're making their way to, uh, to this heavenly Zion uh, on the way of holiness. And, uh, you know, uh, the unclean shall not pass over it. Uh, the only way uh, anyone could be made unclean, uh, ma that was made clean, that who was uh, truly clean, who was ever unclean, uh, is uh, is by Christ. And you, uh, Colossians one, uh, verses twenty one and twenty two, and you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, Christ is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. And so it's Christ who makes the unclean clean. This is why uh, with, uh, with the lepers, I always uh, think about that. Uh, they were commanded to go forth and ring a bell uh, and, and announce that they were unclean, unclean, unclean. Yet when, uh, Jesus uh, is willing to touch one, uh, and uh, his reversal of the uh, of the uncleanness that results from the fall uh, in sin uh, translates uh, the, this man back into wholeness. And so uh, this is what Christ does for us. Uh, 
and uh, it, with respect to our souls. And Jesus identifies himself. It's called the way of holiness, and uh, it will be for those who walk in the way. How does Jesus identify himself? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And uh, the early Christians, uh, uh, Christianity was, was referred to as those who follow the way. Uh, you find that in the book of Acts. And so this is a pretty amazing uh, piece of prophecy. Uh, on the way of holiness, it says, the redeemed shall walk there. The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Anybody here ever sung Brahms Requiem? And Jesse, yeah, Jesse did. He was in there too. That guy hated tenors, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, everything was above the ledger line. But anyway, uh, the um, the second movement uh, is uh, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Um, of course, it was all written in German, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, that's uh, that was uh, just as the glory of the Lord inspired Handel, uh, this idea of the ransom of the Lord uh, inspired uh, Johannes Brahms. Um, and uh, who were the redeemed <clears throat> uh, in the fullness of time. Uh, Christ came born of a woman under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that they might receive adoption as sons. Uh, Christ uh, has uh, the ones that Christ redeemed, just his remnant, uh, uh, it, it are those who are redeemed. And who are those who are ransomed? Uh, First Timothy 2, 4, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. Uh, so you find these terms of the of redeemed and ransomed uh, correlated in the New Testament to the, to the work of Jesus. And the idea here is of this grand procession on the way of holiness. Um, it's the heaven and earth are renewed. Uh, the richness of God's creation is restored and all God's people, uh, his faithful remnant from every age of history are redeemed and ransomed and made new in Christ. And the days of sorrow and sighing are over and they come with singing and hearts full of everlasting joy and gladness. And so, um, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. <laughs> it's, uh, and this is a, uh, this is really the, <laughs> this is the closing note uh, in this section of Isaiah before we get to the, uh, the little historical section uh, beginning in chapter 36. So as uh, we see the, uh, uh, looks like things are looking up. Uh, <laughs> we get into more of the uh, promise of, uh, of, of the Messiah and of the coming Redeemer uh, as we go forward here. But anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and stop there. And uh, when we get next week, we'll uh, look at uh, Sennacherib uh, threatening Jerusalem and how King Hezekiah and uh, the prophet Isaiah respond to all that. So I think the chariots, their wheelbase is exactly the same as our highways today. Is that right? I think I remember. Oh, that. really? I remember that. Um, the chariots or the Romans, their roadway is exactly what we have today. Same with um, where the wheels are, I believe. I could be wrong, but it's like I remember that from somewhere. Sounds right. Go <laughs> fit on that highway. <laughs> Thank you. So, I had one thought while you were talking, reading about the progress. Yes. Translated as a rose, and I was thinking of a beautiful piece called Low Era Rose Now Bloom. Yes. And I was thinking, well, it's better that they said rose because it wouldn't work if you said Low Era Crocus. You <laughs> know, <laughs> it really would. <laughs> That's great, you know, because I, I know I've, uh, the old King James shows, uh, uh, translates uh, uh, crocus as rose. Yes. Uh, and uh, this is what um, 
evidently there's not really a native rose growing in uh, in, in the region of Palestine, but uh, and this is what where Miss Winifred Walker was of great assistance to me. On that. Yeah. What what exactly was the plan? I mean, you know, was it approaching or was it? Uh, I mean, it was a bold plan. Yes. They wanted to take the what a lily too, right? Lily of the valley. No, later translated lily. That's it. Yeah. 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 I always that, that old old hymn my grandmother used to play on the piano. He's the lily of the valley. He's uh yeah. We sing that in church. Uh-huh. Somebody write it down for the music minute. Well, he does he does take really Yeah, he looks them up, uh, even yeah. if they're not in the hymn, you know. Adrian Drew this. And the first Sunday they did it, I wrote on the note, please sing this one. And he, and so after he said service, he went, we did, didn't we? And I went, yeah. <laughs> Those are all county songs, but it, 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 it listens. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, we look forward to that day when we will uh, enter Zion with singing. Uh, we who are you know, the redeemed and the ransomed of the Lord. And uh, we praise you that you preserve uh, a remnant through through the hardships of, the, of this life. Uh, we pray for your remnant everywhere in this world right now. And uh, uh, we help uh, that you would strengthen and encourage them, uh, those who are who are suffering. And uh, we uh, give you glory uh, that uh, you have remembered us and have called us uh, into this fellowship in Christ. And we thank you for your word. Uh, and um, please uh, let it dwell in us richly this week and uh, uh, help us apply it to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.